Mindful Mondays. I'm Connie Bowman. I usually teach on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. at the North Laurel 50 Plus Center. And I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, I need to practice, and um, it's nice to have this group together on Monday mornings. And our group usually practices in a circle, and I love the idea of the circle. It's um, it links us and it shows that we're all together, we're all equal, we're all uh, linked and not ranked. So I, I am a student uh, with you. So, um, And that being said, anything that I suggest that will not work for your body during this practice, um, for whatever reason, be it injury or um, any kind of um, just what's going on with you today, just modify as as you need to. Don't do anything that is um, not helpful for you. This, this is intended to be helpful and healing. Um, so. so that being said, we'll come to a comfortable seat. And I'm here propped up on a blanket and a little lumbar pillow. It's just something to get my hips a little bit higher so that I can um, have a nice tall posture, nice long spine. So that's really helpful so that we can work with our breath opening up the chest a little bit more, and just finding that length that we're all seeking. So as you arise and get comfortable, if your legs don't want to cross this morning, just extend them out, find a comfortable seat for you. And I invite you to close your eyes or soften your gaze. And then bring your awareness to that area right around the eyes. Notice if there's any tension at the brow. And see if you can soften the eyelids. And then soften the eyes behind the eyelids. See if you can relax that area a little bit more. Relax the jaw. Let the whole body soften, including the belly, the hips, the legs. And then bring your awareness to any external sounds you hear, even the sounds on the WebEx feed. Just notice them. They will eventually go away. I have faith. Notice the sounds in your room, the sound of my voice. Bring your awareness to the temperature of the air, the sensation of the clothes on your skin. Maybe the beating of your own heart. All these sensations and awarenesses that remind us that we're here this morning alive, in color. And then with that nice soft belly, begin to invite in a slower, more deep and intentional breath, filling up the belly, the ribs, And bringing that air all the way up into the lungs and pausing. And then exhaling any way that feels natural to you. So through the mouth or the nose. Just letting all the air out, completely emptying. And begin again, slowly inhaling, this time through the nose. Filling up all the way to the tippy tops of the lungs. Maybe imagining the air is coming all the way up to the crown of the head and pausing there. And then with the mouth just gently closed, exhale through the nostrils, feeling that sensation of the air, gently caressing the upper lip as it leaves the body. Empty completely, belly draws back into spine. Good. And then begin again, inhaling deeply. 
and exhaling fully. Beautiful. Keep going, slowing down your breath even more if you are able. And we'll take a few more breaths together as I divulge the secret location <laughs> that we are all wondering about. I am on the eastern shore of Maryland and I have this view. So I have been set up here for the last um, couple of months now and it's been a beautiful place to practice. And I practice here on my own and now with you. We have the lovely Asawoman Bay behind me. <laughs> and the nature has been changing as we have been um, watching the summer um, unfold before us. And yesterday I had the opportunity to um, sit outside with my neighbor who told me about these diamondback terrapin turtles this, two of them, two females, who laid eggs right in the house, right, right, not in the house, right <laughs> on the side of the house next to me. And he showed me a video that he took, and it was just fascinating. Now, those of you who went to the University of Maryland, you know the diamondback turtles are the state reptile of Maryland. So go diamondbacks. That's pretty cool. Go terrapins. Um, but this video of this terrapin, this female turtle who was laying her eggs, and she had about 10 of them, um, in the sand. And the meticulous nature of this um, unfolding nature right in front of me was just amazing. So she would lay her eggs. You could see the little eggs dropping in the sand. And as she did, she'd reach down with her back <laughs> paw, her back foot, and kind of dig it out and make sure that the egg landed exactly where she wanted. And then one after another, she would just lay these eggs. And then she meticulously covered up the eggs so that um, her children would be safe. And you didn't even know she had been there afterwards. And then she took off, and there, there are the eggs. And August is the month when all the terrapin babies are born. So we're very excited about that. And that, it just reminded me of how um, beautiful and hopeful nature is, and um, in this time when hope is um, sort of fleeting, as Emily Dickinson would say, like a feather, um, we can use all the hope we can get. So um, let's just keep the hope idea in mind as we begin to practice. So <clears throat> you can keep your eyes closed and just draw your shoulders forward, rounding forward. Draw your belly into your spine and let your little turtle head, your neck come down towards your chest, and just round forward, stretching the back of the neck and the upper back as you do. And then wait for your inhale and draw your shoulders back and peek your turtle head up and look up, finding some more space in the front body. And we'll exhale again, rounding, just waking up the spine a little bit, drawing the back toward the back, so we're rounding. Seated cat cows, we would call these. Inhale again, we'll draw the shoulder blades toward one another, making space in the heart for the breath, and then round forward again. We'll take two more, just moving with your own breath this morning. And then as you're ready, bring your chin parallel with the earth and sit up nice and tall. And we'll change the cross of our legs if your legs are in Sukhasana, easy pose, knowing that easy pose ain't all that easy. So um, do what you can. And then we'll sit up again and just take our left fingertips, walk them over to the left. Take our right arm and sweep it around and take, it, take a hold of that right ear and just gently draw that left ear toward the left shoulder. See if you can get a little stretch in that right side of the neck. And we'll take two breaths here. And on the third breath, just see what, how it feels to take your chin over toward that right shoulder, just getting a little bit um, into some nooks and crannies there on that side of the neck. 
Maybe it's just a little gentle, subtle movement. Or maybe you have a little more mobility today. Just get curious about what you are able to do. And we'll stretch a little bit more. One more breath in. And then as you exhale, release that right hand and walk your fingertips out. And we'll sweep the left arm up and over and stretch that other side. So you can walk your fingers out a little bit more. That gives you more of a stretch in the right shoulder, the right side of the neck. Take a couple of breaths here, filling up, and then gently letting go, keeping that long, slow exhalation that's just a little bit longer than the inhalation. Good. And then as you're ready, maybe take that chin down toward the left shoulder a little bit more. Just notice how that feels on this side. It might be a little bit different than the other. Big breath in. Nice long breath out. And then slowly release that. <clears throat> Shake that out. And then take some circles if that is something that might feel good for you. Just imagine you're drawing a circle with your nose right in front of you. We'll get Try to get the kinks out of the neck, just paying attention, smoothing things out, and then go the other direction. Good. Come back to center. Blink open your eyes if they are closed, and we'll release our legs just for a moment, just bending your knees, bring your feet in front of you and just rock from side to side, leaning back. Maybe a little hip stretch here this morning. And then as you're ready, take that right leg forward, sitting up again, flex that right toe and take the left leg across the right leg and lift the right arm up See, I'm already not mirroring you, but listen to what I say. (laughs) And then take that right arm inside the left knee. And then take your left hand behind you. Lift yourself up. Press into the earth or the mat behind you. And lift your heart a little bit more. And as you inhale, take your gaze over that left shoulder. As you exhale, maybe twist a little bit deeper. Maybe stretch your neck in that direction, just gently, moving slowly. One more big breath in, twisting from that center of the body, that right side of the rib cage, working into that thoracic spine. And as you exhale, slowly unwind, release that, and we'll extend that left leg long and cross that right leg over, reset, reset, flex that left foot and take that left arm to the inside of this right leg. Now, that's not gonna work for your shoulder. You can always just give yourself a hug here. But if you're ready, reach that right arm up and back, sit up nice and tall, inhale. Twisting and exhale, take your gaze over that shoulder. So we're moving slow and steady like the turtle. What can we learn from that turtle? Patience, (laughs) slow and steady wins the race. A lot of wisdom in that turtle. Inhale one more time and exhale. Unwind, good job. Come to a comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. So Sukhasana is my choice. You can also come into um, Baddha Konasana, bringing your feet together. We'll just be here for a little while longer. Um, So sitting up nice and tall, rub your palms together, create some heat. And then we'll take our hands, our palms, and just gently let them Uh, rest atop the eyes, just feeling that soothing energy of your own heat, heated palms. Let that soothe your eyes, soften your eyes even a little bit more. It's 
softening all those muscles around the eyes and just bringing your awareness to that area. It's something we take for granted until the eyesight starts to go. And when you're ready, remove those hands, blink your eyes open, nice and wide, open up as wide as you can, and then close your eyes, scrunch them up. And then open them again. You guys are alone. I'm the only one who's making silly faces, so go for it. One more time, open the eyes nice and wide and scrunch them. And then just come to a natural gaze. Just notice how your eyes are feeling. And take your eyes, without moving your head, nice tall posture, take your eyes up to 12 o'clock, just your eye gaze. So we're stretching the eyes here. Take a big breath in, and as you exhale, take your eye gaze down to 6 o'clock. Good. Inhale, come back to center, and take your gaze over to, to your right. Good. Coming back to center, go the opposite direction. So if you can imagine a clock, come back to center. We're going to go back to 12 o'clock, and then we're going to move clockwise around the clock. So keep your breath slow and steady. Take your gaze to 12, and then one, two, just slow circles. Go slow all the way around the clock, just blinking whenever you need to. So good for the eyes, especially if we're spending a lot of time on the computer. Keep moving in circles, and if you find any rough spots, just see if you can smooth them out, and if you feel like everything's moving well, just speed it up a little bit. Don't get dizzy. Good. And then come back to center, rub your palms together again, and we'll uh, cover our eyes and soothe them with our own healing hands. A nice big breath in. Exhale it out. Take your two fingers and just rub your eyelids just gently from the insides out. And let your palms rest in your lap and keep your eyes closed and just notice how you feel. Notice your eyes. The other day I went swimming and I didn't wear goggles and my eyes were so... Um, red for a few hours afterwards and I was tearing up and I really <laughs> I was really kind of mad at myself I should have worn goggles to protect my eyes but again I took them for granted until I they were they were bothering me so when you're ready blink open those eyes again we're going to take it counterclockwise this time we're going to really work our eyes so we have eyes to see so take those Take the gaze to 12, and then go around 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Try to keep your head steady as you move around the clock in the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Smooth out your circles as much as you can. Good. One more time around the clock. What if we could turn back time just by doing this? If I could turn back time. Rub your palms together and take your palms on your eyes. Soothe your little eyelids and breathe in. Exhale out and then take your fingertips. Just give yourself one more little eye massage. Take it to the outsides, to the temples, to the jaw, all the way around. Heck, why not give yourself a little neck massage while we're back there? Good. And then blink your eyes open and just notice how you feel. Take a nice big breath in. We'll come up to tabletop. Enough of that. So if you have a blanket or a towel handy, I recommend putting it underneath your knees so you can be as gentle with your knees as possible. And then take your knees under your hips and your hands, fingers spread nice and wide under your shoulders. And then let the tops of your feet rest on the mat. And we'll take some cat-cow. So drop your belly, draw your shoulders back, lift your gaze, lift your tail. 
and inhale. And as you exhale, round forward, crown of the head comes toward the floor, the tailbone comes toward the floor, rounding, drawing the belly into the spine. Good. Inhale again. Hi, Sophie, you coming to say hi? And exhale, round. We'll take a few more, just moving that spine forward and back. Good. We want to move in all six directions, forward and back, side to side, twisting right and left, just to get everything worked out. Okay, here comes the Sophie shake. She came by. She didn't shake for us, but just shake, shake it out. And when you're ready, press into all um, of your fingertips, all the pads of the fingers, especially the thumb and the forefinger. Tuck your toes and just let your hips slide back just ever so slightly and notice how that feels, stretching your feet. Take a big breath in and then slide forward. Take your hands and turn them the opposite direction and we'll stretch our wrists. Just slide back. You won't, you'll notice that stretch right away. <laughs> So only slide back as far as feels good so you get that nice stretch. And then come back to center, turn your hands forward again, pressing into those finger pads, tuck your toes again, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog, that upward facing V. And we'll take our heels and press them toward the floor. Now, no, um, nothing wrong with having your heels high maybe two or three inches even off the floor. That's just the way it is, but we're still getting a good stretch of the hamstrings and the calves and the backs of the legs. Soften the back of the neck, shake your head yes and no. And then walk your dog, bend one knee and then the other. Just finding a little bit of movement, finding what your body needs this morning and then stillness. Pressing those heels toward the floor, lifting the hips a little bit more. Pressing into those finger pads, taking a little bit of pressure off those wrists. We'll breathe in, look forward, move anything out of the way that might be there, and then take a walk to the front of your mat. Find a forward fold. So the head is just going to dangle. The knees can have a generous bend to protect that lower back. And then maybe you want to take a hold of your elbows and just let the head rock side to side and forward and back. Nice big breath in. Exhale it out. Head under heart. So good for us. Release the fingertips to the floor. Bend your knees. And as you inhale, root into the ground and rise up, reaching up, finding length in the body, reaching those fingertips up toward the sky, lifting the toes and spreading them, and then lowering them down one at a time so you can press those toe pads into the earth, just like we were doing our fingers. Good. And then as you're ready, take your palms together, draw it right down, draw your palms down into your heart, pressing your thumbs into your sternum, and we'll pause here in mountain pose. Inhale, take a deep breath, and then exhale, release your palms so they're facing forward. And take a look forward. Notice if your chin is drawing forward like our little terrapin friend, and see if you can tuck it back in and draw your shoulders back and down. Find this rootedness, this groundedness. Good. As you're ready, inhale, root to rise, reaching up, looking up, and we'll take a hold of that left wrist with your right hand and just lean over, make that banana shape with your body, leaning over toward the right, stretching that left side body, pressing just as much into that left foot as that right foot. Take one more breath in, and as you exhale, just rise back up. We'll take a hold of the right wrist with the left hand and just lean over to the left. Good job. Maybe even take your gaze over to the right. Big breath in. 
Nice long exhalation. And then we'll reach up again, sending those fingertips up toward the sky. And then flip your palms. Take your hands back behind you. Clasp them. Draw your shoulder blades together. See if you can draw your palms toward one another. Maybe they are making contact. Engage your quadriceps. Press your toes into the earth. Get really grounded here. And then lean back and look up, squeezing those shoulder blades even more. A little back bend here. Big breath in. And then as you exhale, bend your knees as much as you need to to fold forward. Let the crown of the head draw toward the earth. And maybe straighten your legs a little bit more as you lift your arms up overhead. This will counteract any slump asana that we practice unknowingly. And then as you're ready, take your gaze over to the left, just leaning slightly, drawing your arms over to the right. See what you can see. I see birds. And as you're ready on your exhale, slowly come back to center. And then inhale, take your gaze over to the right. Drawing your arms to the left. Good job. Inhale back to center, release your hands, come back into that forward fold. Maybe your legs are a little straighter here this time. Take an inhale, come into a flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, drawing the hands to the shins and the shoulders down, away from the ears, back away from the ears, making a little tabletop. And then as you exhale, take your hands down to the floor and let's step the left leg back, coming into a runner's lunge. So fingertips are framing that right foot. Let's just lower that left knee and lower the top of the left foot. We'll come into Anjani Asana, this stretch of the left hip, hip, hip flexor. And then just lean forward. Lean forward a little bit more so that maybe your knee even comes slightly ahead of that right ankle. That's okay, unless there's pain. Only sensation, only stretching, only goodness. Slow and steady. So if you feel a lot of stretch in that hip flexor, you can always back off. But if the stretch is starting to feel super yummy, just lean forward a little bit more. Notice how you feel. Breathe here. Yes. And as you're ready, just release your left hand to the floor. Take your right arm up and take a twist toward the right. See so if you can take your gaze toward those right fingertips. Maybe rotate that right wrist in one direction and then the other. And then on your exhale, take your right hand down to frame that right foot and let your hips come back. Lift your toes off the floor and stretch that right hamstring. So as you inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heart, and as you exhale, maybe your hands come to frame to the floor, flat to the floor, framing that right leg, and maybe your nose comes down to your knee. Breathe here. You can always kickstand that left foot if you feel like you're starting to wobble a little bit. Inhale again, lift and lengthen, and then exhale, refold. Good job. One more breath in, and as you exhale, come forward. Bring your hands to frame that right foot. Lift that left knee, and we're going to step that right foot back to downward facing dog. Just coming into our down dog again. We'll take two breaths here. Letting the head, neck, and shoulders all do their part to stay in alignment. So the tailbone to the crown, the crown to the tailbone, one long line of energy, pressing those heels toward the floor. Good job. On your next exhalation, look forward and step that left foot forward. Just take it forward. Do your best. And then we'll lower that right knee down to the ground. Right top of foot comes to the ground. And we'll rise up coming into Anjani Asana on this side. So here we go. Find some length in the crown of the head lifting. Some lift of the heart. 
and then press yourself forward until you find that hip flexor stretch that feels really good, only good. Maybe press yourself a little more forward if that's stretching you in a good way. If you're feeling hopeful in this stretch. So many people tell me that they can't do yoga because they're too inflexible. Well, that's why we do it. Just like that turtle, one practice at a time, right? We just take our time. We don't expect us to be in these um, really stretchy poses immediately. It takes time. So we keep, keep coming back. Take one more breath in, good. And then take that right hand to the inside of this left foot. Take your twist, lift that left arm up. Maybe take some circles here. Going in both directions. Maybe twist a little bit more if that shoulder's feeling good. You feel that openness, expansiveness, that hopefulness. Breathe in and breathe out. Take that left hand to frame the left foot and sink your hips back. Lift those left toes and then lift your heart. Look forward. Take a big breath in and then bow. Find that stretch of that hamstring. Always the option to place something under a knee. Maybe you just pad your, pa your mat for the whole practice. You just have to kind of keep smoothing it out. It's a good idea, especially if your knees are sensitive. We'll take another breath in, lift and lengthen. Fingertips maybe come to the mat. And then as you exhale, we'll take one more bow. Full breath in. Nice deep exhalation. Press forward, bring your hands to frame the foot, tuck your right foot, lift that knee, and step back, downward facing dog. Find your down dog that works for you. Good. Lifting those hips. And then come up to your toes, look forward, and take a walk or a hop up to the front of your mat, and we'll meet in forward fold again. So take a hold of your big toes with your peace fingers and then draw your elbows out wide. Again, keeping a generous bend of the knees if your lower back is feeling it this morning. And then maybe even bringing your belly to the tops of your thighs here. Take a big breath in. Exhale it out. Maybe straighten your legs a little bit more. Or perhaps reach around. Give yourself a big hug. And then just... Squeeze, arms wrapping around the legs, straightening your legs a little bit more. Just notice how that feels. Nice big breath in. And as you're ready, slowly release. Good job. We're going to rise all the way up. One vertebra, one bicycle link at a time, reaching up, looking up. Let your palms touch, and then draw them right down into your heart. Let your eyes close. Let yourself feel this mountain pose here, finding that long line of energy from the bottoms of the feet, rising up to the crown of the head. Big breath in. Nice, long, slow exhalation. And as you're ready, release your arms out to the sides, blink your eyes open, and we'll stay at the front of the mat. I'm just coming here because I can. And bring your feet about hip width. Let's find a stable base here in our mountain pose. Lift and spread those toes, and then press them into the earth. Press all four corners of the feet into the earth. And then just rock from side to side, start to Feel that sensation of balancing. And then find that center point that works for you. Get long. Notice if you're turtling your chin. See if you can make your chin parallel. 
And then look forward and find something right ahead of you that is not moving. A little spot on the wall will do. Fingerprints are great, as long as they don't agitate you. I've got a tile. And then take your weight over to the left foot and gently come up to your right toes. And just notice how that feels. Your hands can come to heart center. Sometimes that focus in the center of the heart brings us a little more uh, balance. This is perfectly fine for you to stay here. But if you'd like to go a little bit for farther, go ahead and lift your right leg up to about waist height. Notice the small adjustments your right ankle, your right strong leg is making to keep you standing. Good. And this is plenty. But if you're ready, take your right hand reach it out to the side and reach for that right ankle and you can stretch your hamstring. Now this left hand can also come back and you can get a little chest opener if you want to use both hands, squeezing those knees toward one another, lifting your heart, shoulder blades drawing. And if you're near a wall, a wall is great, a table, a chair, so many things to use to steady yourself as we practice this balance, but it's so important. Keep your drishti one more breath. Good job. Breathing in. And exhale it out. Release it. Good job. Shake that out. Sophie, shake. Sophie, you should come over here and show us how you shake. Sophie, come on. Oh, she's pretty happy in the corner. All right. Take your weight and distribute it evenly. Find your drishti and then lean over to the right side. Come up to the left toes, maybe hands to heart center. And just notice, maybe this is where you stay. You start making adjustments here, just naturally, unconsciously, right? Just to keep steady. And if you'd like, lift your knee about waist tight. Just notice how that feels for you. See if you can flex that foot. Keep your steady gaze and your steady breath. And when you're ready, if you'd like to go for that quadricep stretch, reach back. Try to make those knees, draw those knees back, back and down so they almost kiss or kiss. And draw that heel toward your hip, maybe using both hands. Just steadying yourself with your breath and your drishti, your gazing point. Finding steadiness, finding stillness. Excellent job, one more breath. And slowly release. Good job, excellent job. All right, we're gonna come back to the tops of our mats. We're gonna make our way down to the mat. So with a big flourish, inhale, reach up, let your palms touch, lean back, and exhale, forward fold. Make your way down, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, take your hands to the mat, take your left foot all the way back, and then take your right foot all the way back. And so we're in high plank here. You can always lower your knees. If you'd like a little more core activation, just come down to a low plank and take your elbows to the floor. We'll be here for two breaths. We've got this. Can you keep your face soft? Can you keep your belly soft as you draw it in? Can you keep your whole countenance relaxed and easy? That's enough. Slowly lower your hips, the tops of the feet to the floor, and we'll come into Sphinx Pose. So elbows under the shoulders, palms on the floor, gaze forward, drawing the shoulders back and down. A gentle back bend for this morning, so good to counteract slump asana. So these terrapins, these diamondback turtles, are endangered. So 
So they are encouraging homeowners, if you happen to have a diamond back in your backyard, to um, take some measures to protect them from the wildlife that would, you know, naturally be predators of these little babies. So my neighbor covered up the little turtle nest with some rocks. And we're anxiously awaiting the baby's arrivals. It's so exciting. Take your hands and make a little pillow and draw your right knee up towards your right elbow. Just make coming into that sleeper pose. <clears throat> just to low, relax that lower back. Soften the lower back. Breathe here. Turn your head to one side, maybe toward that knee. That is drawing up toward the shoulder. One more breath in and then release that right leg back. And then turn your head to the other side. Lift that left knee up toward the shoulder. And full breath in. Nice, long, slow, deep exhalation. One more breath. And then release that leg back. Bring your forehead to the mat and just windshield washer your legs side to side. And then extend them long. And then just we'll take an unceremonious roll to our backs. Come all the way back, having your props nice and handy. And then hug your knees into your chest. Take some yummy knee circles, drawing your circles in one direction, giving yourself that sacral massage. And then go the other direction. We got a little bit of a late start today, so I'm gonna go for a couple more minutes if that's okay. Totally understand if you guys have to leave. When you're ready, place your feet on the floor <clears throat> we'll take our palms to face the floor and then snuggle your shoulders underneath you. And as you inhale, lift your hips high, coming into bridge pose. Now you wanna, might want to take your arms and clasp your hands underneath you and lift up a little bit higher, squeezing your glutes, hips lifting toward the sky, heart opening, breath slow drawing those inner thighs toward one another, pressing into the feet equally, all four sides of the feet. And take one more breath in, and then slowly exhale. Let it go all the way down to the earth. Good. Extend that left leg long and hug that right knee into the chest. Take the circle of the ankle toward the right, and then toward the left. Good. And keeping that left leg relaxed, take your left hand and gently guide your right leg across the body. Take that right arm and open it up and then turn your gaze toward that right arm. Simple twist. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more full breath in. And exhale, let it go. Come back to center. One more nice squeeze of that right leg and then let it go. Reach it out. Hug that left knee into your chest. Take some ankle circles here. Good. And then gently guide that left leg with your right hand over to the right and then extend that left arm and turn your gaze. Gentle stretch to the neck and breathe. Maybe close your eyes, beginning to soften muscles that may have inadvertently tensed up during the practice. It happens. <laughs> breathe in. Breathe out. Good. One more breath in. And then as you slowly exhale, come back to your back. Take a squeeze of that left leg in. And then as you exhale, gently release 
You might take your blanket or your pillow and give it a tuck under your knees, letting your lower back have a little more comfort. You might tuck a little blanket under your neck. And then take your shoulders and snuggle them again. Let your palms reach out to your sides and let the palms be face up here. Let your heart shine forward, shining up toward the ceiling, and then just let everything melt. We'll start at the top, softening the crown of the head, releasing tension in the brow and those eyes. Softening the face and the jaw. Relaxing the throat, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, and the hands. Relaxing the belly, the hips, the legs, the feet. Everything melting toward the floor. Taking your final pose, the most important pose, Shavasana. We'll just be here, letting this practice integrate our bodies, minds, and spirits. A little writing about hope from the book Mystical Hope by Cynthia Bourgeau. Hope fills us with the strength to stay present, to abide in the flow of the mercy no matter what outer storms assail us. It is entered always and only through surrender. That is through the willingness to let go of everything we are presently clinging to. And yet when we enter it, It enters us and fills us with its own life, a quiet strength beyond anything we have ever known. And since that strength is, in fact, a piece of God's purposiveness coursing like sap through our own being, it will lead us in the right way. It sweeps us along in the greater flow of divine life as God moves toward the fulfillment of divine purpose, which is the deeper, more intense, more subtle, more intimate revelation of the heart of God. As you're ready, slowly begin to deepen your breath. Make some small movements with fingers and toes. Or just stay where you are. But if you'd like to join me for a final breath together, use the strength of your arms to press you up to a comfortable seat. We'll meet with our eyes closed and our hands at heart center. And once you get there, take your chin back down to your chest, just a bow of humility, of reverence for this life for all of creation and for the circle that we have created. And take a big breath in and reach your arms up, reaching up for all the goodness. Take your hands back down to your heart, drawing it right down into your heart. Find some gratitude, find some hope, sending it out into the world as we are able. Thanks for joining me again for another episode of Mindful Monday. Until next time, namaste.